You're watching Breakthrough News. I'm Charlotte Tenherenstein, and you're watching Breakthrough News on BTR Today. Today, we're following up on last week's conversation on the Senate's release of the torture report in light of recent remarks on Meet the Press by Dick Cheney. I'm joined by John Neffel from Radio Dispatch. Thank you, John, for joining me. Happy to be here. Happy to be here for it. Um, so, I mean, unfortunately, it's quite, it's a, it's a pretty um, unsavory topic. But what, what is the most galling? Because he said several pretty shocking things. What, in your view, is the most galling? Yeah, well, I mean, the main takeaway from Cheney's appearance on Meet the Press is uh, when he said he would do it again in a minute. And I think that that is a shocking uh, indictment of uh, really of where we are as a country. And I think that. Uh, that's why prosecutions are so important because Dick Cheney, uh, a lot of people like to think that he's sort of singular in his uh, vileness, and I don't think that that's true exactly. I think that he is actually, um, what he believes is actually far more mainstream than a lot of people want to believe, and so uh, we shouldn't single him out as some sort of supervillain character. I think that if he says he's willing to do it again, that's a threat that we should take uh, very seriously. I mean, how have how have other Republicans responded to him? Uh, well, essentially across across both parties, there's nobody calling for uh, prosecution. I mean, amongst. Uh, Amongst Republicans, I think there's more than anything else uh, uh, this idea that the report never should have been released. Um, I mean, I don't think that, uh, with, other than a few exceptions, I think you have Marco Rubio saying that uh, everything that the CIA did was was completely justified, and uh, you know, so you have some you have some uh, presidential hopefuls sort of staking out their. Uh, "Quote unquote uh, hard on national security issues, but I think um, for the most part Republicans want to keep the focus on discrediting the report itself and not necessarily defending Dick Cheney as such. With the exception, I guess, being John McCain, who's always sure. vocal against yeah. and yeah, uh, yeah, McCain has been very forceful in his uh, d uh, his refutation of these tactics." Uh, for somewhat obvious reasons. I mean, he was a, a prisoner of war, and, and he's been through torture firsthand. And so I think that although uh, there are many, many areas in which I disagree with John McCain on this particular one, uh, fellow conservatives uh, in, in his party should should take note. I guess my, my main curiosity, my main question is, does Cheney actually believe what he's saying? Because I... I could there be something admirable about someone sticking to their line if they believe it, if he really, really feels that way? And I mean, because it's got to be a pretty unpopular stance to have, you know. But I just, I just don't know that I actually believe that he does feel that way. I don't. Yeah, I mean, I think that he is a true believer. I think that uh, in his very closed circle of uh, people whose opinion he values, he's actually very much in the mainstream. And I think that the the person that he referenced most often in the Meet the Press interview is this guy, uh, Jose Rodriguez, who oversaw the torture program and subsequently oversaw the destruction of uh, dozens of uh, tapes of the torture program when Rod uh, Rodriguez was worried that those tapes could eventually be used as evidence against uh, CIA agents. And so the fact that you have Cheney... Um, uh, mentioning Rodriguez several times over the course of the interview, which, by the way, Chuck Todd uh, did not um, push back nearly enough on and say uh, he didn't inform the viewers that the man that Cheney was talking about was responsible for the destruction of evidence, uh, which, of course, for any other person is a very serious crime. Mm. It should be for the CIA as well. I mean, it's... Okay, so I guess I'm, I'm willing to believe that he thought that he was doing the right thing. But lines like rectal feeding could have been for medicinal reasons. That just doesn't sound 
compelling at all. You know, like it would it would be it seems like it would just be much easier for him to say there were mistakes made, we didn't know about everything that went on, I still stand by waterboarding and all these other things. You know, but I mean trying to say that rectal feeding was for medical purposes just seems unnecessary. I don't know. Yeah, well and and the report itself says that that those procedures were were medically unnecessary. There was no medical disposition that said that that this was the only way to rehydrate or, or feed people. It's it's absurd. And so for Cheney to go on TV and and say that, uh, and again, that's another uh, element that Chuck Todd uh, did not say. You know, Dick Cheney, you're incorrect in saying that these are for medical reasons because the report itself refutes that. I mean, I think that the the best, the easiest way to uh, to understand that. Is that uh, Dick Cheney's definition of torture in the interview uh, is 9/11, which is really, uh, I think, a, a profound and, and disturbing way to answer the question: What do you think torture is? Because it, at the core of of Cheney's worldview and the worldview that is shared by many people in the intelligence community. Uh, is that Americans, by our very nature, by our very virtuosity, by our very uh, exceptionalism, are uh, incapable of torturing people. That that uh, things that Americans do are, by definition, in pursuit of a greater virtue, because America is this, uh, you know, God's country on earth and all that. And I think that once you buy into that. Uh, view of American exceptionalism, you can uh, twist your mind into all sorts of pretzels about why uh, things like rectal feeding are um, something that you can kind of turn a blind eye to. Mm, I mean, I guess it's a double-edged sword, right? Because American exceptionalism, as you as you were describing, could absolutely lead to you know being more lenient on yourself because you think you're special. But I think it could also still be a very valuable ideal to hold oneself up against which I have to believe is what everyone who's, you know, condemning the torture report uh, or the activities of torture is doing, you know, because, because we're such a, you know, a, a liberal, enlightened society, uh, this is not okay, you know? So I sure. think it's, it can also be a very valuable thing. Yeah, yeah, it, it can be. I think that um, when, you, when you actually look at the, the history of the CIA and, and really the history of much of uh, the United States, um, that exceptionalism is is a uh, a myth, and it doesn't really hold up. In this particular case, if people are saying we shouldn't torture because we're better than that, that and that that's something that I'm perfectly comfortable with. But um, you know, whenever people say that the CIA went rogue after 9/11, uh, the, they should read their history of the CIA. The CIA has always operated in in. Uh, Outside the law, I mean that's 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 their their very function. Um, there have been times when they've been relatively reined in, uh, for instance, after the Church Committee. But I think that it's um, it's historically inaccurate to say that 9/11 changed everything for the CIA. I mean they've been breaking the law willy nilly for uh, since their creation uh, shortly after World War II. Hmm. Well, we are going to take a break. We'll be right back in a minute after this quick excerpt of live studio on BTR featuring Monomyth. Take a early nap, chat with you in the bath, and if you're not home, I'll wait for your phone call. I can know that that's not all because of falling in love with you again. You again and again and again and again. No, I'm falling in love with you again. You again and again and again and again. We're back talking about Dick Cheney's response to the torture report. So I want to talk a bit more about how he defines torture. You mentioned that you know that he he has said you know that 9/11 was a form of torture. That just doesn't that just doesn't seem accurate at all, right? Because the whole point of torture is that it's like prolonged, you know. As a, I mean, a, a immense suffering. Yes, torture in the sense of of general you know tragic hardship for everyone affected and everyone who has to live through it. But is I mean, what what is what is the official definition of torture, or what do you how do you define torture? 
Uh, well, it's, I mean, the, the definition that, that international law uses is cruel, degrading, or uh, inhumane treatment. Um, uh, that's what's banned by the, uh, the UN um, Convention Against Torture. Uh, the way that the, the uh, Bush uh, officials eventually described it was that uh, it wasn't torture unless it uh, caused uh, prolonged uh, organ damage. Uh, and so you have this, uh, you know, this completely inadequate uh, definition of torture that's completely outside the the realm of uh, of international law. Um, and even under those uh, those um, sort of ad hoc definitions that that John Yu and Jay Bybee, uh, the the torture memo authors, came up with, uh, you still have torture in this program even under their. Um, sort of absurd definition of it, uh, and uh, and and as far as I know, nobody has previously said that 9/11 uh, is torture. It 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 only makes sense if your answer to every single possible question is 9/11, and that's a sort of joke that people make about, for instance, when Rudy Giuliani ran for uh, for president. Uh, the Onion called him uh, the mayor of 9-11 because every answer to every question was 9-11. And what we're seeing with this interview with Dick Cheney is that there is no answer, there is no justification for any of these policies other than pointing to this uh, one event and saying that after that anything we did was justified. And uh, there are actually some some polls that, that came out recently that uh, I, I think have some really disturbing results. Uh, that the majority of Americans uh, uh, think that torture is acceptable either uh, sometimes or often. There's uh, a poll by uh, ABC and a, a poll by uh, the Pew Center, and both found that that uh, the majority of Americans support the use of torture, and um, uh, huge numbers of Americans think that torture quote unquote works. And uh, provided valuable intelligence, which the C which the Senate report uh, flatly refutes. I mean, do you think that the Senate report will have a strong impact on those views? No, I mean these polls were conducted in the in the wake of the the Senate uh, review, and so if they were going to have an effect on uh, Americans' opinions, I think that that it would have happened. And I think that there are a couple reasons why uh, torture polls so high. I think one is that there haven't been prosecutions, and so there's just this de facto uh, pardoning or uh, de facto legality that um, people who don't pay close attention, as you know, many people rightfully have other things going on in their life, they just sort of think, well, if it was if it was bad enough, then somebody would have gone to jail. And I think that by and large, there has been a removal of the cultural taboo against torture uh, in pop culture. We see that uh, sort of starting with uh, the show 24 and then going through movies like Zero Dark Thirty and up to right now shows like uh, Homeland, which is incredibly popular, all of which glorify torture in various ways, all of which present a world in which torture uh, works and is effective. And I think that that's had a real uh, degrading effect on uh, Americans' views of torture as a, as a country. Mm. Well, we are going to have to stop there. Clearly, this conversation is going to be going on for a while in the public space. And given ambiguity of feelings on the matter, it probably should be. So thank you very much, John, for joining me today. We'll be right back in a moment after a quick excerpt from BTR's live studio featuring Las Rosas. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Be sure to check out BreakthroughRadio.com through the weekend for our continued winter week coverage, including a look at some winter superfoods and an article on how cuddling sometimes saves lives. That's it for us here at Breakthrough News. Tell us what's breaking through your world on Twitter at Breakthrough Radio. I'm Charlotte Tenenstein, and thank you for joining us.